Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Bitter Rivals podcast, episode 129, powered by 91N. I am your host, Avery Rausch, along with co-host Gatano Gallo, as per usual. Uh, so we have some hockey to talk about, finally. We are excited to talk about it. Um, do you want to start on opening night? I'm sure you want to start on opening night. <laughs> I, I, Avery, I would love to talk about opening night. Uh, okay, let's, because let's it was the Sam Montembeau show. Uh, it was. It 48 was. saves shutout to kick the season off uh, yeah, in Montreal think, against the Leafs. If I'm not mistaken, that is the first time the Leafs have been shut out since November of 2022. Like 20, yeah, it was something like that. It was a absurd. ridiculous stat. An absurd streak of, of scoring goals. But anyway. Uh, yeah, Sam Montembeau just stood on his head. Uh, 48 save shut out to open the season. Is, one nothing. Uh, that is the that is the Carey Price special right there. Like actually, honestly, honestly, like with Carey Price in the building, uh, it was just it was fantastic to watch. Uh, Cole Caulfield getting the goal. Uh, he's he's on a heater, six and six so far, um, and just it, he just looks a lot more confident in the offensive zone, which is a good thing to see. It looks like the shoulder surgery from last year is you know kind of an issue of the past uh he looks to be at his best uh and yeah the Habs have had a an okay start to the season nothing nothing good nothing bad six games uh, two wins three losses and overtime loss actually a shootout so you know five points in six games it's not great but it's also not terrible we also played uh, a couple of tough teams too um but yeah I would say like through six games the Habs looking all right yeah, well, they are the Habs. And if you look at the Atlantic Division right now, like, let's just do that. It is exactly what you would expect it to be. Exactly. Uh, well, like, no, the Senators, Senators are a little higher up than you'd expect. But for well, the most part, the, the top four and bottom four are, yeah. It's hilarious. It's just inevitable, it seems. I don't really know what else to say, other than I'm sick of this division. Like... <laughs> Sick of this division. I'm I'm disgusted. I've said it. I've said it so many times. I'm so glad the Habs suck right now. Like this. This is a fantastic time to be shit in the Atlantic. Because yeah. there's no point of being like okay in the Atlantic right now. In the last couple of years, like it's better off just be dog shit and accept it and be fine with yeah. it. So yeah. Like look at Tampa right now, man. Tampa, Kucherov just pick it up right where he left off, even without Stamkos. Gensel fills in perfectly for Stamkos on that power play, and it's just. Come on, man. Like, how do they continue to be this consistently good? It's They lose Sergachev, they lose Stamkos, and they're still so damn good. It's it's crazy. I mean, my, mind you, they, they've only played four games, so it's not the, you know, not the biggest, uh, you know, sample size. Uh, most of the teams have played at least six or seven in the division. Um, but yeah, just... You almost expect it to not like carry over the whole season like this hot start like you expect them to kind of slow down at some point and have some struggle but at the same time they're the Tampa Bay Lightning and they're fucking loaded like top to bottom front to back like there's a, a real chance that they fucking put up 120 points this year easy yeah and it wouldn't surprise anybody um I think on I'm gonna be honest with you seeing Florida even like after some of the losses that they had them still chugging along uh, Boston they just they yep. just are never not good. Like they're just never not a solid two-way hockey team. The Boston Bruins. It's unbelievable what those guys do. It really is. They um, they literally should have like soft rebuilt about three times in the last decade, and instead yeah. they, they just go deep they just playoff keep runs every fucking year. They just keep winning. Yeah. Uh, so let's. I'm going to talk about a little bit of Leafs specific stuff here. Uh, the big story I think in everybody's mind is Joseph Wool. Like this guy. The last time you saw him, he gets hurt in Game Seven. Um, against Boston, and then he doesn't even get a start this year, and he's already on the mend. And I think that is that is something that worries a lot of Maple Leafs fans and should worry the, the Leafs internally as well. Like, they should be really concerned about this guy's long-term health because I think talent-wise, he, he should be the guy, right? And I'm not taking anything away from Anthony Stolarz. I'll get, I'll get to him in a second because he's been the biggest story of the Leafs so far. Truly. But, man, watching this Wool guy and, and the injuries and what, it's so hard to put faith in him. It's so hard to say, yeah, that's our number one because it, it he's proven now. Like, game seven, Boston Bruins, hurt. Game one, next season, hurt. 
and no sign, no, nothing says he's coming back. I think Berube said the other day, I hope it's sooner rather than later. Hope is not a word you want to be using when it comes to your goaltender, right? Like that is, that is, that is out of the vocabulary when it comes to your goaltender. Having said that, all of that about Joseph Wool, Anthony Stolarz might have been the steal. Like a lot of people were focused on Tanev. A lot of people were focused on Ekman Larson, even Hawk and Paw, like kind of some of the changes that the Leafs made. I think the biggest sneaky steal there was Anthony Stolarz because that that guy has been good. Like that guy has been exceptional in that. It has not skipped a beat. He put up, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he led the league in save percentage last year at 925. Smaller sample size because Bobrovsky obviously played most games down in Florida. But he's picked up right where he left off. And he's being given the net. He's been, he said, you're our goalie now. You're starter number one. We got a freaking young kid with the bones of a 50 year old carpenter there. Um, he's hurt now. So you're going to have to step up and boy, has he ever, and the games that we've lost the one to you guys, what one goal. You got goalied. <laughs> like you like guys we got, got goalied. there's no, that was not on him. The game against New York. I, I was out at a bar. I didn't watch it that in depth, but well, we both were out at the bar. Yeah. Um, but he was great again, two goals against. And if I'm not mistaken, he leads the league in, in goals saved above expected, which isn't an official NHL stat, but is a little bit more of an in-depth stat that just tells you based on the quality of chances that he is seeing, he has been the best goalie again this year. And to me, that says a lot because what do we have? I don't even know what his contract is. I, I feel like I should know that. It's a shame Cat Friendly doesn't fucking exist anymore. Yeah. Because that would be a quick. <laughs> would be uh, quick. But just on, 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 five on million. goalies quick. Especially, specifically, well, like, you guys have unfortunately been in this situation, um, like, a lot in the last couple of years where it's, oh, here's our guy. Oh, my God. Since and then Freddie started... Anderson, dude. Matt yep. Murray. Jack Campbell. Freaking. Yep. Yeah. No. Samsonov. Like, just not a spot you want to be in. And that's why seeing Stolarz play like this is very, very refreshing. And now realizing that we have him for 2.5 per for two years. Can't argue with that. <laughs> that's a good contract. That actually, talking about goaltender contracts, maybe we can segue. Oh, I would love to segue. Else. Okay, let's do it. So there have been three notable goaltending contracts signed. One notable goaltending goal contract not signed. Let's start with the ones that have been signed. So, Linus Olmark, Jeremy Swayman, and Jake Ottinger all signed matching eight-year, $8.25 million deals. Thoughts, Katana? Um, I don't hate it. I think it's, again, so the whole thing with cause Swayman was the first one to sign, and his basically his goal was to like reset the goalie market. Um, I don't, I don't hate it. I don't hate eight two five for for him. Uh, and then when I look at Ottinger and Allmark, they're also kind of similar caliber goalies. I would honestly same. put Ottinger a tier above both of those guys personally, but I, I I would have them in the same tier, but Ottinger ahead of them if that makes sense. Okay. Um, but again, like they're 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 close enough in in quality uh, in their play that I don't think that's like a big you know, like it's not like one of them's fucking like. So you're you're not, you're not paying fucking Peter Mrazek fucking eight two five right like no it's no these are all yeah. solid pieces yeah for sure. th these are all like legit like we because we talk about like one A one Bs like these are like legit number one goalies in the NHL like they eight two five I think is a, a fair number the eight years I I don't I don't particularly care for like term when you're when you're discussing that I'm more especially they're all relatively young guys right like exactly yeah. um. And also, I'm not really allowed to, you know, uh, make fun of goalie contracts, uh, given the carry price one. Like, I can't be like, oh, like, too long and too expensive, because 10 by 10 and a half to carry price was fucking, you know, I, I lived and died by that contract. But yeah, I thought those three were were fine. I have I have no issues with any of them. Now let's talk about the one that wasn't signed by Igor Shosturkin, who, was it 10-5? Or was it? It was, it was 11, because it was 88 mil. $88 million, and this boy turns it down he was going to be pay be the highest paid goaltender of all time i would assume that price was before right so i think maybe bobrovsky is equaled i think they're i think bobrovsky's deal is also 10 and a half i think no you're you're definitely correct 
You're yeah. definitely correct in saying that. So he was, it doesn't change my point. He was going to, by half a million dollars, exceed the highest paying goaltending contract of all time. And he turns it down. So let me ask you, do you think that's him not wanting to be a ranger? Um, given the state of that team, I don't think so. Like they're, they're a, a kind of a playoff, not lock, but they should be making the playoffs. They're good for two, three rounds easily. Like they've got good depth. They've got good young players coming through experienced leaders. Like, I don't think, you know, like if he was in say, I don't know, fucking, if he was in like the, if he was on the other side of New York, if he was the Islanders. Absolutely. I think that would be a case of like, I don't want to be an Islander. Um, the things I think Shesterkin is better than all three of those goalies, so I do agree that he should be getting paid more than them. I just personally, I just can't fathom turning down eighty-eight million dollars. Like that's that's the part that like stops me right there. It's like no, if you put eight, an eighty-eight million dollar contract in front of me, I'm signing it. Like that's not yes. even a. But like, yeah, it's tough because I, do I think that? he is worth that money probably like i think he's one of the best goalies in the league like maybe only behind vasilevsky um Hellebuck. yeah eh, yeah Hellebuck anyway, like, the there, of last year there that that's the top three goalies in the league and i don't think there's debate around that right? right so he i do believe he deserves to be paid like the third or second best goalie in the league yeah um but again, like what that number looks like to him, because to me, like 11 is, yeah, it's your the highest paid goalie in, in league history. It's your lockdown for eight years. So basically the the prime and kind of, you know, a little bit of the kind of uh, downfall of your career is in New York. Like, I, I don't understand rejecting it. But at the same time, if he thinks that he is, you know, more than, you know, quarter or half a million dollars better than Bobrovsky or, or Price was, or that he's, you know, I'm not going to do the math to figure out every goalie. But, you know what I mean? If he thinks that he is that much better, I also can't really argue with him. Well, he had a rough year last year. Like, for his standards. He was not as good as yeah. he would have liked to have been last year. Which is another reason I'm surprised he turned it down. Because I think, like, he's got to be self-aware enough to know that goaltending is voodoo. We've established that a long time ago. Goaltending, one year you can be a league MVP. And then the next year you might not even be a Vesna candidate. Right. And that's exactly what happened to Shesterkin. He won the Vesna and was an MVP candidate one year. And then the following year, he wasn't even a Vesna candidate. So that's where I'm lost from his perspective is I would just lo- like that is so much security. Right. Like you for eight years will be getting paid eleven million dollars a year. No matter what happens, no matter how good or bad you are. And after seeing what happened to him last year, if I'm him, I'm going to go, you know what? That's probably a good contract for me to take. Like, personally, I would have. And again, just somebody puts $88 million in front of you. You'd be most of the time pretty stupid not to take it, you know? And it's it's hard for me to kind of wrap my head around where he's at. Just a, like... So the other thing is like he he's he's had really good seasons before last season too. So for him, he's probably looking at it. You know what? I had one kind of down year. I was still like good. Like he still was very good. fine. Like it was still like yeah. But like I think he looks at that as saying okay, like you know that this is the contract offer I'm getting after like a, a kind of okay to good year. Like I'm gonna have a fucking great year this year and earn and you know make them want to pay me whatever he wants i don't they haven't put out i I don't think they've released like a number what he's looking for but i'm going to assume it's probably 12 plus if he's turning down 11 well and i'm thinking he's probably where his mindset is is i'm not only one of the best goalies in the league i'm one of the best players in the league i want to be paid like it i want to be paid like matthews mcdavid dry mckinnon crosby if you took more than 8.7 like you know what i'm saying what what, what, what crosby's worth (laughs) right like that that has to be where his head is at yeah and so so i i think um similar to what i said about stan post last year except he didn't really uh he didn't end up signing any extension but instead of taking kind of the and i don't want to i don't want to call an 88 million dollar offer a low ball offer but instead of taking this lower offer after coming off an okay year you know you know, I, I said with Sankos, like, go drop 40 and then sign a massive deal. And it's exactly what he did, except just in Nashville. I think Shesterkin's looking at the same things and, hey, if I go fucking, if I pick up like 35, 40 wins this year, 
you know, have a fucking 925, 930 save percentage. Like, fuck it. They're going to have to pay me 13 or whatever I want. Yeah, for me, it's it's just it, it, the goaltending market is so different than the the forward market or the defense market, right? Like in oh, terms yeah, of what these contracts are going for. Um, where I do see it from his perspective saying, okay, I'm one of the best players in the league. You also have to take into account that you're a goalie. Like, yes, you are, but you're still a goaltender. Teams don't want to bet that much money on a goaltender. It's just that simple because <sighs> it, it can go either way. But here's the thing. When you're as good as he is, when you're as good as Bobrovsky is, when you're good as Carey Price is, when you're good as Andre Vasilevsky is, like, that is a, a gamble that teams are willing to take. Yes, and, I, I you know, understand. You, you, so again, it's 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 two sides of the coin here. Like you understand why he wants the money that he wants, why he turned down the deal, but you also understand the Rangers not wanting to pay him, you know, an absolutely ridiculous amount. I mean, I, I say absolutely ridiculous. It's like not really. Like it is a ridiculous amount of money, but not given the context of like the league right now. I hear you. Okay, now that we've talked about the Leafs, we've talked about goaltending, is there anything that you would like to bring to our attention Habs-wise? Um, in terms of the Habs, I think the biggest story so far this year has been Lane Hudson. Um, he's looked pretty good. Obviously, you know, he's played, what, eight professional games at this point? Like, it's not, uh, you know, he's 19, played eight professional games. Uh, he picked up... A, <laughs> Uh, not the one, what game was the third? Uh, fuck, I forgot what game. It wasn't the Islanders game uh, on Saturday. The game before that, he played 30 minutes. Oh, well, we played LA 30 minutes as a 19 year old in the NHL. Again, he's he's created a ton. His defensive game is only going to get better. It's already decent now. Um, that's decent for a 19 year old kid in the NHL who's playing like top four minutes. Like, it's he's, he's doing fine. Don't get me wrong. There's there's absolutely room for improvement. Fine like, doesn't win Calder you know. trophies. Well, play, when he gets fucking time in the power play, it will. So here's the thing. The half power play has actually been like kind of decent this year, which is funny enough because it's never been decent in my lifetime. Um, but yeah, I think once he gets around on the first power play unit, he takes over Matheson because Matheson just can't fucking run that unit anymore. Um, I think that's when you'll see the points total start to to increase. Um, but yeah, I, I've been super impressed with him so far. Again, 19 years old, uh, basically playing as a top defenseman already. Um, yeah, I think it's been, it's been a, an okay start for him. Yeah. Um, well, I obviously don't religiously watch Habs games, but I did watch one and the one that I did watch, I'm, he seems to be a lot of, um, frills. He looks good. I wouldn't say he is. That's it, like the attempted head fakes. That's got to stop. He looks ridiculous out there. Well, here's the thing. If they were, looks why insane. stop? It, because they don't work. It's not working. I just, I, the hype that Habs fans, including yourself, kind of brought about this kid. I was expecting a lot more than what I've seen. And I, albeit, like you said, it's been, what, have you guys played seven games this season? He played one last year. Is that correct? Oh, sorry. So he's played eight games, six this year, two last year. Two last year. Okay. I, I was just, I just expected to see more. Uh, the way that you were hyping him up, I was expecting Kale McCarr to skate out onto the ice almost. Like, that's that's how you had me feeling. And I'm sure that's how a lot of Habs felt, Habs fans felt, watching this kid be put where he is in the lineup this year. And it just hasn't happened yet. Well, well that it's I, just, I, do, I, just, I just want to say, he, he's... He's in the spot in the lineup where he is because uh, the third oldest defenseman on the Habs right now is Arbor Jackai. It's Matheson, Savard, Jackai in terms of just age. Uh, and then it's Caden Gooley and like the rest of these kids. So yes, like it's not like he's uh, he's walking into the most insulated uh, kind of uh, circumstances. Uh, like I said, like he's kind of getting top minutes, not really out of like you know, oh, let's like, let's give him these minutes for fun. Like, no, it's kind of out of necessity that, oh, like he has to just kind of play these minutes. Like Matheson went out hurt uh, in the game against LA. So that's why he played 30 minutes, you know? So, you know, I think, I think again, eight games into his career, 
he's been fine. You know, his game is only going to get better from here, right? Like, it's if this is the baseline, if this is the worst we see of Lane Hudson in the NHL, I am so okay with that. Like, if these are the building blocks, absolutely. Like, sign me the fuck up. Lock him in long term. Like, this is totally fine with me. You have an interesting take there, my friend, because it sounded like you were expecting a heck of a lot more. Oh, I am. But I'm also willing to give him time to, to do it. I'm not expecting it eight games into his NHL career. Right? Okay. Well, that's fair. Um, we have a fun little segment that we are going to play today. Uh, did you want to do one or two teams per week? Um, I, I think we can start with one for right now. Okay. So I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't want to get all of them done like by December. <laughs> so this is, we, I am, we are stealing this idea from Overdrive on TSN, just to be clear. We're borrowing the idea. We're borrowing the idea. Please don't sue us, is all I ask. Uh, so what we are going to do is we are going to eliminate every episode a team from playoff contention so not playoff contention stanley cup contention and by the end we will have two remaining teams we hope to have these done by the beginning of the playoffs and that will be our decided cup final so this week Gitano, are we going to do one each or do you want to come to a consensus i th- here's the thing i think these the, the first like these early ones probably the first five to seven i think are going to be super easy it's just a matter of like us deciding which of these teams are like we're going to pick because like we could honestly start at the top of the alphabetical order and you say the Anaheim could, Mighty Ducks aren't winning the Stanley Cup this year. Yes, I could, I could probably give you 10 teams right now who yeah. for sure are not winning the Stanley Cup. Like, do you want to even do that? We'll give a baseline here. We'll, we'll get the obvious ones out of the way. So you, know, you want to start with like, let's go, let's start with four. I think that's okay. like fair. Okay. So, so Anna, Anna, I'm going to nominate the Anaheim Mighty Ducks because they are not going to win the Stanley Cup. San Jose Sharks, not winning the Stanley uh, Cup. They were my second one here. Yeah. Uh, Columbus Blue Jackets, not winning the Stanley Cup. Nope. Let's get another Eastern Conference team. Come on, Gatano. Uh, the Ottawa Senators. Okay, that's that's a spicy one. They're not winning. No, they're not winning a Stanley Cup. You're probably right. Here's the thing. Here's like, the thing. If, you can, if, you, right. if you can put the argument on the table for them winning a Stanley Cup, we can change it. But until that point comes up, well, they I just paid a, they just up. paid a goalie eight point two five. Yeah, who That's plays the in front of that? problem? Goaltending always has been. Who 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 is the defense core that plays in front of that goalie? That's fair. <laughs> like, hey, 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 I'm just playing devil's advocate. I right? know, I know. Should I'm, I'm taking step though. Sanderson I'm, I'm, takes a step. I'm just making sure that I'm not just like a total Senators hater. Like my my hating of the the franchise as a whole um, isn't entirely like just uh, you know like I think their team sucks and I hate their franchise. It's it's two different things. Gotcha. Right? Like the Leafs. Like the Leafs. I hate the franchise. The team doesn't suck. Right. Senators is just both. Okay. Fair enough. So that that's our four. Yep. Right there. The Ottawa so Senators. Ducks. And I'm Ducks, Columbus Blue Jackets, Ottawa Senators, and San Jose Sharks. Not winning the Cup this year. Not winning the Cup. Okay, I like it. That is a fair four. I could think of another, like, ten teams right now, though. Here's the thing. We we could narrow this down, like, real quick. That's why I said I wanted to take it slow, because it's going to be... Yeah. All right. Uh, Is there anything on this episode 129 of the Bitter Rivals podcast that you would like to get off your chest, Katana? Um... Just quick shout outs to Evgeny Malkin and Sidney Crosby for some points and goals, milestones uh, in the last couple of weeks. Just fucking rolling. Doing um, it together. Yeah. Just like that's the fucking dream. You know what I mean? Like to have uh, like because they're basically like best friends, like to fucking win cups and fucking reach milestones and play your entire career with your best friend. That's gonna be fucking dope. Yeah. So shout out to them for that. For sure. Uh, so what do the Leafs have lined up for this week? Uh, it is a busy week in Toronto, actually. So we have the Lightning tonight. This is being recorded on Monday, October 21st. Uh, so we have the Lightning tonight at 7.30. Oh, I thought that game was at 7. Okay. Um, tomorrow we're in Columbus at 7.30. So back-to-backs. And then we have the Blues on Thursday uh, in Toronto at 7. And the Big Bad Bruins Saturday at 7 p.m., Hockey Night in Canada, in Boston. That's, that's pretty heat. 
Uh, it's funny, the Habs have actually a pretty quiet week, uh, so only with the Rangers in town uh, tomorrow, 7.15 puck drop, and then the Blues in town Saturday night for a 7 o'clock puck drop, so nice quiet week for the Habs. A tough game, though, with the Rangers coming to town, but uh, hopefully they're up for it. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it, for me, this season has started quite slow. Yeah. Like, it just, like, I, I don't know what it, maybe it's, like, the fact that I'm a Leafs fan, and it just doesn't even matter, but... <laughs> Like, no, because here's the thing like, even last season, like, it felt like the Habs played every other night, and it has not yeah. been like that to start this season. And I no. know it's probably like a scheduling thing, but like, there's been so many times where I like, I get home from work, I'm like, hey, like, who do the Habs have tonight? I'm like, oh, we don't play for three more days. Yeah. Yeah. No, so, yeah. it's, yeah, it's, it's been a slow burning season so far. Hopefully things pick up here though, because, uh, I love watching Leafs hockey. So hopefully things pick up. We get a few more games. This is a busy week for the Leafs. What What's next week even look like? Monday, Thursday, Saturday. So next week's a three-gamer. This week's a four-gamer. All right. That's all I have. That is all I've got. All right, everybody. Thank you for listening to episode 129 of the Bitter Rivals podcast, powered by 91N. And we will talk next week.